Well, hello everybody, I'm Louise Eddington. I am the Cosmic Owl of Cosmic Owl Astrology. And here we are on January the 19th, just two days and about an hour and a half away from the inauguration of a new president. So I thought I'd do you a video today looking at the inauguration chart with a quick look at how it um, aspects the USA chart and the asp and the charts of the new president and the new vice president. So um, here we are with the inauguration chart. Now I don't want to make this really long, um, but I will have to tell you that this chart looks pretty horrible. Okay, so um, oh bear with me I just want to clear all the drawings I want to move my chart down and I want to show you some um there's my arrow there it is so one of the, some some real pointers in this chart okay first of all the inauguration is at 12 p.m um in Washington DC that's the official time of the swearing in ceremony and the first thing that worries me is that the moon is at the anoretic degree of aries uh, that which means the last degree of aries which is where mars was on november on oh, sorry yeah <laughs> whatever date it was what month are we in on january the 6th 20 2021 when um the um, insurgents at the Capitol building happened um, in DC. So that degree is activated on the inauguration chart. At the same time, Mars has now moved on and is within five degrees of an exact conjunction with um, Uranus. And that in itself is also an explosive um, aspect. And not only that, <laughs> but this Mars Uranus conjunction is in square to Saturn, both Saturn and Jupiter over here. And um, a square aspect is also a point of tension. And Uranus rules Aquarius, is the modern ruler, and Saturn is the old um, ruler of Aquarius. So we have both Saturn and Uranus saying um, stick with the same, the, the uh, conservative, the, the, the blocks and things. But Uranus saying liberation, break free. Now, liberation depends on your perspective, of course. So, you know, that's all very tense. Also, Jupiter expands everything. And that is the closest square to this Mars Uranus um, um, conjunction. At the same time, just to add a few other points in, Black Moon Lilith, who is a bit of a wild card and quite ragey herself, is um, also um, approaching the Mars Uranus con conjunction. All of those are going to converge, and she moves very fast because I use the the true um, calculation of Black Moon Lilith. So that's adding to the kind of um, erratic, wild feeling of this energy also. Another point to mention is that Ceres and Neptune, um, Ceres is um, very close to an exact conjunction with Neptune. And and Ceres and um, Neptune are both to do with loss, fear, uh, kind of that nebulous fear, kind of fear, the fear of the unknown, also confusion. Ceres is very much about grief and loss, and ne and in Pisces, that's collective. It feels like the a lot of collective grief. Now, I hope we're all wrong about this, The Austro you know, maybe it's the collective grief of the supporters of the current president, you know, that um, who really believed that he was going to be in a second term. Maybe it'll be their collective grief that um, 
that is is brought to the fore so i'm not making any predictions here i am just telling you what the chart is like it's explosive it's grief grief filled it's very tense um our values are going to be challenged in um, taurus which is venus ruled venus is also at the middle degree of capricorn our um, um representing our institutions so that's a point of change other aspects of change are the mutable grand cross to the lunar nodes neptune is going to exactly square the lunar nodes on january the 26th so this is pretty much exact. Ceres will overtake Neptune and square the nodes just before that. And Vesta, um, as I record this, is stationing retrograde. So she's moving back towards the Neptune and Ceres are moving that way. Now Vesta's moving that way. So they are moving towards the North Node. OK, so change in our future change in um, our collective future our community future is on the way so that's all kind of huge that it's you know it's um it's a pretty scary chart add to that the sun is at zero aquarius which is the point of the saturn jupiter conjunction on um, december the 21st so that um you know you can see that all these stories are coming together all of this craziness is coming together we've also got hygia in exact trying to juno juno is the rights of the marginalized um hygia is global health and you know health of course applies to everything and um it's in a heart attacks it's in it's, it's in leo which is heart heart attacks so you know it looks pretty violent it looks pretty shocking um i hope we're wrong um Anne ortley who's an amazing astrologer uh, says that mars um aspects happen as they're approaching now so it's pretty much exact on that so maybe this will be events leading up to the inauguration but Mars is still approaching. It's still five minutes away on the day. And um, if we kind of move forward hours, just, um, you know, to 1 p.m., the moon is still at the anoretic degree. Mars is still not is still not exact. Um, the moon moves into Taurus at um, uh, just before 2 p.m. on the day. Uh, but the Mars Uranus is still approaching and is not exact till um, a, around 4 p.m. on the day of the inauguration. So um, th this is all very, very tense. So let me just go back to that inauguration chart and I just want to uh, bring up, let's, let's look at Kamala Harris first of all. So the VP, because she's there. So, so um, she is actually having her lunar return just before the inauguration, which is a, a, a good time of the month, though. So that I must say that is a very good time of the month for this. Um, so that also that gives me some kind of hope, really, I must say. And um the mutable grand cross with neptune the transiting nodes and vesta is mm, the nodes are kind of squaring her venus and neptune's um opposite it but um jupiter saturn mars uranus are not really causing her many issues so that's 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 nice. Let's have a look at Joe Biden quickly. Joe Biden is actually having a lunar return in the fifth house of kind of the 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 leader, which is, you know, Leo the king. This is the fifth house. But and the moon is going to conjunct his moon. We looked it's going into Taurus and will conjunct his 
moon not long after the scheduled time of the um, inauguration. So uh, hopefully that's good. Your Mar the Mars Uranus conjunction though is squaring his Pluto, which it can be both good and positive transformation. Pluto in Leo, um, you know, it's um, his generation. Um, it's in the eighth house, which is a little bit uncomfortable. I'm gonna say. But you know the 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 no he has nodes at zero degrees of Pisces, and Virgo, and so um, when the Moon hits that, it's aspecting his nodes. So hopefully these are all uh, good um, aspects for him. Um, the the Saturn Jupiter end of um, Saturn Jupiter end of the square is in his second house of self-worth and self-esteem and opposing uh, his Pluto again. And Pluto is, is death and transformation, but it's also about empowerment. So uh, hopefully all this is a good thing for uh, the president elect and, um, and the uh, vice president elect. So looking at the USA chart and the inauguration chart, it, the Vesta is on the Neptune of the USA chart and the North Node is on the Mars of the, um, of, um, the USA chart. And incidentally, I didn't get his chart up, but maybe I will. This is um, also um, on um, or very close to Donald Trump's um, son uh, in Gemini and North Node, his, um, his uh, chart. And the North Node is, um, is on that Mars, with Mars again, disruption, violence. So, you know, whilst the inauguration chart itself is pretty horrible and pretty explosive, um, maybe it'll be uh, on the um, sort of the outgoing energy kind of thing instead of the incoming. I just want to quickly switch to Donald Trump's um, chart. You can see that the North Node's on there. Um, we can see that Vesta is in his first house and Neptune's in his seventh. They're kind of bringing the change. And uh, the south node of loss, the past, is on his moon south node. Now, somebody messaged me just, he's, he's quite psychic, and said, you wonder if he's going to do a Hitler and, and kind of um, uh, take himself out before... Um, and leave a mess. I don't know. He think I would never predict anything like that. Um, but you know, the South Node being on his moon, his he's obviously his he's not his he's mentally not um coping with losing the election. So, you know, that's kind of um an interesting take on it as well, let's say, to put it mildly. And the moon at the moment of the inauguration is actually in trying to his ascendant. So he's actually having more, um, more um, aspects than the president and vice president elect. Um, as well, over here, this is um, in his sixth house of um of service and things but it's it's kind of this mental kind of erratic kind of energy because it's also the area of health and and you know the downside of um aquarius is that it is very erratic and um and he's under a lot of pressure uh, on at the moment because Pluto has been opposing his Saturn and Venus it's at the midpoint of the two pretty much on um on inauguration day and and that's been enormous pressure on him um Eris the 
um, agent of chaos has been squaring his Saturn exactly again, putting enormous pressure on him and his 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 feelings of safety and protection. He's he's being disrupted. He's he's um, he's under most more pressure than anybody else. So <laughs> I'm not making any predictions. Um, I, I did a video, you can find it elsewhere, or I'll post a link in the description on the YouTube about the time leading up to the elections, really saying that anything could happen. And so far, we have seen that anything could happen. You know, we've had an insurrection into the Capitol building, for heaven's sake. And the time between now and the 19th is, is a difficult time um to be quite honest you know leading up to this mars uranus conjunction as i said um i did mention er um, lilith going forward she's actually slowing down so she's but she's well within orb if we look at it just after uh, the days coming after or the hours coming after Ceres moves closer to Neptune. Mars does move past, but then Mars approaches Lilith. So it's all very wild, all very uh, challenging. Um, Uranus only stationed direct on the 14th. So we're still really under the Uranus um, station. Uranus did not move, does not move off the degree until today or the minute, Uranus is um, still at six degrees, 43 minutes, the point of the station. So on, on today, on the 19th here, we can see that Uranus does not move a minute until the 19th, um, not today, the 19th, to be quite honest. Uh, it's early in the morning on the 19th. So we can see there we go. So on the 19th on Tuesday, early in the morning, um, sometime between around just be, uh, after sometime after 5 a.m. mountain time, Uranus will move a minute as Mars is approaching. So we can see that these times are very, very stressful. Um, so uh, expect the unexpected with Uranus involved. Your Uranus n things are never, you, it's, you can't predict with Uranus to be quite honest. All you can predict is change, surprises, shocks, awakenings. Um, so I wanted to just do this just to give you an idea of the energy. So, you know, we now it's now 5 to 11 um, Utah time. So actually um, the inauguration is two days away, will have been, will have happened um, in two days time. So we've got 48 hours of intense intense energies that are very very difficult and and then right after the inauguration um, mars moves on past starts to separate on the evening of the inauguration so hold on to your hats people the best you can do is just kind of go and um, interestingly, one other quick aside before I talk about it, Mercury is also in his shadow. So that's the shadow of his retrograde. So anything happening now um, is likely to be revisited, at least in our minds. And mer with Mercury being communication, when Mercury entered his shadow, um, a lot of people, including me, were banned from certain actions on Facebook. I cannot comment on my own posts on my business page. I can't comment in groups. I can't share to groups. I can't um, comment on threads on news sites because I have 
I get involved in political discussions and I had a three day ban once. So um, I'm part of the um, the band while Mercury is in retrograde. We, uh, sorry, while Mercury is in his retrograde shadow. I find that very interesting. Um, the 23rd is when my um, ban is up and everybody's early on the 23rd. And that's that 23 number that I've talked about lots and lots. So 23 is the number of Eris. Eris is at 23 degrees still. And it's the number of change. It's the most powerful number. It's the most human number. Um, I've actually created a video uh, based on a previous presentation, but it's expanded and added to. And it's going to be uploaded on Nadia Shah, Shah's YouTube channel um, on Inauguration Day. So if you want to hear more about Eris in 23, um, pay attention to that number. It's very relevant right now. But come up, go and subscribe to Nadia Shah and look for that video. But I'll probably also... Um, post it on all my social media channels so while you're here subscribe to this channel um, you'll find me also cosmic owl astrology on facebook instagram cosmic owl astrology cafe group as well on facebook and um, thank you for listening hold on to your hats everybody it's gonna be a, a challenging couple of days